This video was sponsored by Skillshare. Stick around to find out more. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Ultra Lord Show with you forever, the Ultra Lord, your mother's favorite producer. So, have you ever been on FL Studio? You're using a project or whatever like that, and then all of a sudden your PC starts crashing and starts dying, and it doesn't sound good. That's because your PC, unfortunately, to say sucks. It just can't keep up with the amount of pressure you're trying to put on it and stuff like that. So it's trying to compensate with that. I'm going to be honest and just saying most of the computers nowadays can keep up with the demands of audio productions and having a lot of VSTs open and plug and stuff like that. But then now this video is more towards the people who have lower end PCs that don't necessarily have um, a, like a beefed up RAM and all that kind of stuff. So today I'm going to show you just some little bit of tricks, a little bit of tips just to help boost the performance of your PC so it can just run a little bit faster or it can um, perform a little bit better. So I got the song that I made, just jumping into the PC real quick, and it's quite full. It's quite full of things. You can see I use quite a few uh, uh, plugins and a lot of VSTs and I'm running a few things on, but I'm even using 60, 62 cha channels. One of the secrets that I can tell you is just to keep up to date with FL Studio as much as you can. When there's a new update, get your hands on it because they always try to optimize the system for whatever's running on. So let's open up the audio settings over here and let's just move things around. So first of all, I'm using um, the driver of, of, of the one that come with FL Studio, which is pretty good. But I would recommend using something like ACO for all. Uh, that's the best one that comes over there. It's like a generic driver, but it can really run anything over here. And what's cool about it is just changing the, uh, the sample rates. So if you see that little blue line over there, that's already telling you what's the optimal sample rate that uh, your uh, computer can handle. Now, what samples and stuff they do is that it allows you, oh, your PC to have enough time to process the information. So if you put in a very low sample rate, like 80 samples or whatever like that, you're only giving it 80 samples for the computer to generate the sound and plays it back to you which is quite short. I mean, the short it is, obviously, that's where it doesn't have, it's gonna have underruns, it's not gonna have enough time to catch up. But now if you increase that, obviously, to something higher, like all the way to like 240, that's when it has plenty of time to generate the audio and play it back to you quite smoothly and everything like that. Playing things on MIDI, it can be very responsive when you're playing on the MIDI. It's not gonna have any jitters or anything like that, but then you're sacrificing performance with that. So increasing that tab to all the way full while mixing and mastering when you have it, you don't have anything that needs to be automated or anything like that will serve perfectly to increase the performance of your PC. Also, like I rec recommend using the ACO drivers that are in over here. Don't use the direct sound devices because it's using, uh, I don't know, it's just it's slower, all that kind of stuff. The ACO one's much better. Under CPU, I would hit uh, multi-threading generator processing and uh, multi-threaded mixer processing especially if your pc has many cores it's just telling you're just telling it to basically use all the available resources all the available cores over there so it can boost the performance and all that kind of stuff with the mixer the resampling quality i don't really touch this it doesn't really do much for me in my opinion um i just usually leave it at 24 point sync whatever that is i just leave it over there anything higher i haven't really heard any noticeable difference with that so i wouldn't want my pc to run slower and uh, also now with the sample rate uh, as well at what frequency i use 48 or 40 yeah 40 uh, 44.1 but 48 is where you usually stay i would never really go that high because again i don't hear the the, the noticeable difference of playing or uh, uh, on recording things like that that's such a high sample rate so i usually leave it at 48 hertz so that's one thing that you can do too to really 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 just to free up your pc and stuff like that is just to first of all using the aco devices that are available to you number two is uh increasing the the sample rates until your pc is uh can keep up with all that kind of stuff so another thing i would do is that when you have a project like this it's very smart to export the projects in a doctor file in one lo location, one fold, especially if you're using these older mechanical drives. So your PC doesn't have to search your whole entire hard drive just to find the one uh, song file. If everything is in one place, it's easier to find. It loads it from there, saves it over there. So simply just like I'll show you again, you go to file, export, doctor files. Uh, you go to wherever you want to do it over here and then you make a new folder and you just save everything over there Then you also take the FLP and you leave it on over there. So it makes your job 100,000% easier to find 
as well another thing uh, okay another thing i would do as well is to use as much of the stock plugins that come with fl especially if you're using things like compressors and eqs and stuff like that because they were made for for fl to be used you know what i mean so you're not gonna it's not gonna chow up a lot of uh, processing power with all that kind of stuff and also try to use it very sparingly there's another video that i made as well about using sends on your, uh, your 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 vocal tracks so as you can see you have some tracks over here that don't have any effects or anything processed and stuff like that okay maybe one here or there but it's everything has been sent to the what you call the um, sends or the auxiliaries and stuff like that where then i process it like that please watch the video it's going to be somewhere on the left or the right hand side um you check it out another tip i would also just use as well is if to use your tools and go to macros and then you purge all the unused audio clips as well as you can see these are all the audio clips that's been used in this project so if you go there and you purge it fl studio would then just go through the the, the whole project and see, uh, search which ones aren't being used and if it's not being used it will delete it automatically for you so that's amazing it's a real time save as well it's also save space and everything as well another tool i would use as well is switch smart disable for all plugins now what does that mean is that instead of i actually even can see that my uh, my plugins right now but um, it went from 44 percent being used all the way to five percent um but anyway what it does is that if you have a plugin that's playing like uh gmx or whatever like that or even your equalizers and stuff like that if it's not being used it just switches it off basically it's not using it so it's not applying any resources or anything towards that so look at that how much um resources that it ended up not using all the way from 44 percent to six percent so that's also another cool thing that you can use and like like i said it will free up space and all these kind of things so these are just small little like hacks and small little tools that not everybody knows about but this is what you really need to do to get your projects to be well to be more, number one more efficient and to obviously run it on um cheaper or more or less inexpensive com uh, computers right now uh, not everybody has the the the, the luxury of buying uh, the next gen pc or the next gen macbooks or whatever like that so these are the things that you need to be doing to save up uh, on resources on your pc guys if you enjoy videos like this please do hit that like and subscribe button and i'm gonna remind you a second time to hit that like and subscribe button also check me out on my other channel ultra lord live where i'm having a reactions and stuff like that that's going to be a cool uh, cool one that's coming up this week as well and i have a course on skillshare link in the description so you can go check it out and learn to become a better music producer uh but like i said if you enjoy videos like this hit that like and subscribe button and i check you out in the next one peace